Welcome back to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ear nurse. This will be the second part of the Coach Truck video. Here we go more in depth into TPA and go over specific nursing tips related to cold strokes. So before TPA can be administered, the patient's blood pressure must be under 180 over 110. If it's not, you cannot start TPA. This is why it's very important to have a transport monitor hooked up to your patient prior to even getting to CT so that you are already thinking ahead if your vital signs are out of whack. A common medication given as an IV push is labetalol, while a common blood pressure drip medication used is nicardipine or otherwise known as carding. Now, for administration, the dosing is 0.9 milligrams per kilogram with a max of 90 milligrams. Know that you'll give 10% of the dose as a push over one minute, then the rest will be an infusion over one hour. Once TPA is given, the patient becomes a one-to-one, -one. so this patient is your only patient for eight hours. Most facilities follow the protocol of Q15 minute vital signs and a neural assessment for two hours, then followed by Q30 minutes for six hours and then Q1 hour for 24 hours. Your patient is a one-to-one -one for the first eight hours due to how often you're assessing them. Regarding assessments, you'll be doing the neural assessments as discussed, but also keeping a close eye out for sudden changes in mentation as it can be, as it can be a sign of a head bleed related to the TPA. You'll also be watching out for systemic bleeding like GI bleeding and for allergic reactions. Do know that mild bleeding is common and expected with TPA. Mild bleeding includes oozing from IV sites or even the gums and can also manifest as bruising where the BP cuff is. So if any of the complications occurred, not the ones that we expect that any of the other complications like a decrease in mentation or a GI bleed, if these occur, you must stop the TPA and then notify the team as soon as possible. For example, if their patient mentation is declined, the team has to know so a repeat head CT is ordered to rule out a head bleed. And finally, the reversal agents for TPA are TXA, cryo, and FFP. Now let's briefly go over the contraindications for giving TPA. Absolute contraindications for TPA include current or prior intracranial hemorrhage, serious head trauma or stroke in the last three months, uncontrolled hypertension, current use of an anticoagulant with an INR of 1.7 or higher, or a PT of 15 or higher, or a PTT of 40 or higher. There's also active internal bleeding, a history of bleeding disorders, or even a platelet count of less than 100,000. There's also hypoglycemia, but because you're watching these videos, you're going to know that you, among the first things you have to do is check a blood sugar. Then there's relative contraindications that the provider should keep in mind, like any recent major surgery, arterial puncture at a site that is non-compressible, improving symptoms, a history of GI bleeding, pregnancy, advanced age, recent myocardial infarction, and a seizure at stroke onset. Must know things include no anticoagulants or antiplatelets for the first 24 hours after TPA infusion. Make sure to keep your patient on bleeding precautions. You're gonna have patients who completely recover after the TPA and then they wanna walk around and do things, but you need to keep a close eye on them because if they fall and hit their head, a head bleed could easily occur. And then remember, no invasive procedures for at least 24 hours after giving TPA. Invasive procedures can even include like IM injections, NGs, Foley's, and of course, central lines, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's go over some specific nursing tips. As always, safety is the most important thing. So if you are ever unsure, get a second pair of eyes. If you think it's a stroke, but aren't quite positive, ask someone to come do their own assessment. I know I said this already, but for code strokes, never ever forget to get a blood sugar. Also, if you're going to give TPA, get two IVs beforehand because you don't want to be poking the patient after the fact. TPA is weight based, so it's going to be super important that you get an accurate weight for your patient. It's really helpful when you have a weighted gurney strictly for code strokes, so you can use it and get an accurate patient's weight. So when it comes to strokes, know that you're going to have a few before you feel comfortable, but after you get like three or four, the steps are going to become secondhand nature to you. So just be patient with yourself. A quick tip is that after TPA, 
providers will usually order a repeat head CT 24 hours after. So be prepared and in time managed for that. As for a last point, I'm seeing a trend to change from alteplase, which is known as TPA, to tenecteplase, which is known as TNK. The key difference with TNK is that it's going to be a fast push of 5 to 10 seconds instead of with TPA, how we do a bolus, then an infusion over an hour. Most facilities are still doing alteplase, but just be aware that TNK is also becoming more popular. Now, let's go over the question of the day. What test is commonly performed? performed for patients experiencing chest pain or shortness of breath. This same test is also done for patients who have missed their dialysis. And can you explain why? Thank you for your time today. I hope that I was at least able to teach you one thing. If you want to keep learning, I've listed my favorite ER nursing related books in the description with my favorite being Sheehy's and the case files. As well, please take the time to watch my other videos. Also, if you would like to help support the channel, I have, a, I have nursing stickers and shirts up on Redbubble that you can check out. Again, thank you for your time today. And as always, Teamwork makes the dream work, and here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.